Hey YouTubers, what's up? Welcome to TSJ 101 Sports. We're going to be talking about the SmackDown Live event that just took place. It is the last SmackDown Live event before Hell in a Cell, which takes place this Sunday. So we're going to go over, over everything that took place on SmackDown Live, including new number one contenders for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. So Rusev Day, they finally became the number one contenders to the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. So they're going to take on the New Day at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. In case you missed it, two weeks ago, the New Day, they became Five Timers. They're part of the Five Timers Club, which was a skit that was on Saturday Night Live a long time ago. Tom Hanks, Steve Martin, Paul Simon, and even Justin Timberlake got in on the action when he hosted Saturday Night Live for his fifth time. But it's, it's an old skit from the 90s. And so when New Day was crowned to be part of the Five Timers Club, that was just kind of a nod to that Saturday Night Live reference and that skit back in the 90s. But King Booker came out and... He somewhat crowned New Day being part of the Five Timers Club. Booker T, if you don't know, is probably one of the more known five-time champions. His catchphrase is five-time, 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 five-time champion. So he's very well known for that. So it only made sense that Booker T would be the one to uh, christen and crown New Day as part of the Five Timers Club. But again, that was a silent live skit, and that's kind of what WWE was referencing two weeks ago. But now back to Rusev Day. Rusev Day is, without a doubt, one of the more over acts in all of the WWE right now. The crowd loves Rusev Day. Uh, they got a good thing going for them. Think back at SummerSlam when WWE decided not to turn Rusev on Aiden English or Aiden English on Rusev. I think that was kind of a tall tale sign for WWE saying, hey, you know, we're not going to break these two up. We're actually going to go forward with them and just kind of see what we got with them. And so when the triple threat tag team match was announced last week, uh, kind of figured Rusev Day would be at the top of the list, and sure enough, here they are getting a SmackDown Tag Team Championship match at Hell in a Cell, so I think between Aiden English and Rusev, they're pretty much overall happy with what's transpired. I know a lot of people wanted Rusev to go on and have a glorious singles run, but, you know, this kind of helps Aiden English, who is without a doubt held his own, and again, he didn't turn on Rusev at SummerSlam which I think a lot of people were speculating. And so because of that, it only makes sense that WWE wants to see what they have with these two and see really how the fans respond. Because again, this is one of the more over acts in WWE right now. And so WWE just, it doesn't really hurt at this point of time to try Rusev Day and see what you can get with them. We saw a little bit more of The Miz and Maurice versus Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella's rivalry on SmackDown Live. We saw the Wives fight in a one-on-one -on -one match. I think it was the first time in seven years that Maurice had competed in a WWE ring. I know a lot of people forget that Maurice, she was actually a champion in the WWE a long time ago. She was a two-time champion, as a matter of fact. And so she can kind of hold her own in the ring in that regards. But the match on SmackDown wasn't really much of a match as it was an act or her play. Just a bunch of running around. Uh no real match or anything like that, but that's fine. I mean, this story, you know, it's going to keep going and going. So adding the wives really only adds fuel to the fire for Miz versus Daniel Bryan. I mean, Maurice got involved at SummerSlam, so it only makes sense for Brie Bella to, you know, respond and have her husband's back if, you know, Miz's wife is starting to get involved. So, I mean, from a storytelling standpoint, this does make sense. I know somebody brought up the fact that the last couple to take on Miz and Maurice, it didn't end so well. Of course, they were referencing John Cena and Nikki Bella. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Brie have been married for a very, very long time. They're very much more in love, I, I assume, than Nikki Bella and John Cena were, considering they're not together anymore. Um, but Miz and Maurice are cutthroat as a couple. That's why Miz is so dangerous when Maurice is around and so successful when she's around, because they really are the yin to each other's yang, and it really works in the storyline of the WWE and the characters that they've presented to us. We just ask that Brie Bella really uh, not try a suicide dive attempt during this next pay-per-view match, because the last time she tried it, it didn't end so well. We got to see the Queen in action on SmackDown Live, your SmackDown Women's Champion, Charlotte Flair. I know a lot of people want to make her out to be the heel in this story, but the way WWE is booking this, she, she's not the heel. Becky is the heel. Becky is the one who did the quote-unquote cowardly attack on Charlotte Flair when, you know, the name of the business in WWE is to win, and so Charlotte to be kind of chastised for being put in this position, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense logically on paper, and so WWE is not going to go the route of Charlotte being the heel. It, it's Becky. Becky's the one who attacked Charlotte, so that's kind of where they're going with this, whether people agree with it or not, that's how it's going to be booked 
uh, in WWE's POV point of view. Remember that these women were part of the four horsewomen, a stable back in NXT. It was Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, and Bayley. And so this has all the makings of being very personal. Kind of surprised that this match uh, wasn't really considered for Hell in a Cell based on the history of these two women. I guess maybe the rivalry had is just fresh. It's, it's too new. It was started you know, less than a month ago, and so it would be kind of a rush to put them in the cell. But again, history is there between Becky and Charlotte. Tensions have been there for a while, and it's kind of reached a boiling point. And so this would be a good time to put these two in the cell as it relates to the story. Um, but, you know, WWE elected not to go that route. And so I'm sure these two women will put on a great show on Sunday. But again, Becky is the heel, and that's how it's going to be booked. So just expect that out of the storytelling from WWE moving forward between this rivalry of Charlotte and Becky. Another rivalry that's going on SmackDown Live, really heated rivalry, is Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. By the way, and for those that are wondering, Jeff Hardy has gone full-blown Willow. I know a lot of people were wondering when Jeff Hardy came back to the WWE whether he would pull out the Willow persona. Um, this is as close to Willow as we will ever see from Jeff Hardy in the WWE. I mean, maybe they might add more like face paint to Jeff Hardy or something like that, but this is his Willow persona, the face paint, the way he's talking. Uh, he's even singing in his promos, uh, talking about demons and, and cleanse and all this other stuff. And so this is the Willow persona, or as close to Willow as we will get from Jeff Hardy in the WWE. But he's going to be taking on Randy Orton, who works better as a statistic psychopath. He has gone full-blown villain mode in WWE, which I think everyone agrees works better for Orton. I mean, his persona is that of a snake. He slithers around and pops out of nowhere and hits you with the RKO, and then he just kind of sneers afterwards. And so, I mean, those signs point to a villain, and Orton can work as a hero, but he's just such a better villain. It just rubs off on him better, and it's just more natural for him. And Randy Orton has been in a ton of Hell in a Cell matches. Keep in mind, this guy has a ton of experience in Hell in a Cell. He's fought people like Daniel Bryan, Mark Henry, John Cena, even The Undertaker, even though Undertaker beat him, but... Um, the point is Randy Orton shows up in these destructive matches. Randy Orton even beat Cactus Jack in a no-holds-barred match way back in the day and was beaten to a bloody pulp. So, you know, Orton can definitely hold his own in this sort of environment, and so can Jeff Hardy. But Jeff Hardy's never been inside Hell in a Cell, and so experience tends to lean towards uh, the winner in certain situations, especially Hell in a Cell. WWE likes to lean towards the guy who has actually competed in Hell in a Cell, and uh, has a pretty good track record overall. This being Jeff's first Hell in a Cell match, it, it's not looking too good, but we'll save predictions for our Saturday preview. Just know that Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton, this is going to be a really, really good match, and actually might have implications for a championship down the road, which we are going to get into now with AJ Styles, who is the WWE champion. He will be battling Samoa Joe, and this is a very, very personal rivalry, or what it's become. Samoa Joe talking about AJ Styles' family, his wife, his daughter. I'm surprised that this match isn't inside Hell in a Cell because of how personal it's gotten, especially with the families. I don't know, maybe WWE will make an announcement uh, through their app or on social media or, or something, but uh, it's just kind of shocking that AJ versus Joe is not inside Hell in a Cell. Either way, this is a fantastic rivalry. It's a shame that Joe might actually end up not winning this rivalry. I know a lot of people like Samoa Joe very high on him, for the promos he delivers, and how vicious and ruthless he really is uh, in the ring, and how believable of a character he is perceived as. But it would be kind of a very dark outcome if Smojo were to win this rivalry, and so it, it just seems all signs are pointing towards Randy Orton versus AJ Styles down the road. But in order for that to happen, Orton would need to win on Sunday along with AJ Styles. So there's still some time to see exactly what's going to transpire after Hell in a Cell, but all signs do point towards AJ Styles versus Randy Orton coming up in the near future. It would be nice to see Joe get the belt because, quite personally, I think he deserves it. But, again, I understand why WWE wants to keep the belt on AJ Styles and why they would even want to have him fight Randy Orton. Uh, Randy Orton versus AJ Styles on paper is just too good to pass up if you're a creative writer backstage. And so you would really like to get that rivalry and match uh, underway as soon as possible. That way it's in the record books and it's and it's done and it's, you know, it's, it's there. But again, Samoa Joe, he's very, very good. So uh, the odds of him actually taking the title aren't too bad, but looking long-term, it does seem Orton and Styles is going to be what's set up 
as the main rivalry after Joe and AJ. But again, we will do more predictions of Hell in a Cell on Saturday. So again, this Sunday is Hell in a Cell. We're going to be doing a preview show on Saturday, so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of that. Also, be sure to subscribe to our Twitter accounts, Facebook, Instagram pages, and visit our website at www.tsj101sports.com. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.